Hello, my name is Sina. I will be talking about constraining and watermarking PRFs from milder LWE assumption. This is a joint work with Chris Pikart. We start with reviewing the definition of constrained PRF. Bonnet, Waters, Kiais, and others, and Boyle and others uh, introduced the notion of constrained PRFs in three independent works. A constrained PRF is basically a PRF which can delegate or generate a constrained key with respect to some predicate C. So for instance, in this picture, we have this party who holds the secret key or master secret key of the PRF. And uh, we have this user. And now, uh, at some point, this party who holds the master secret key decides to give this user a constrained key with respect to some predicate C. So it sends uh, this constraint key to this user, constraint air constraint key with respect to some predicate C. Now, uh, this constraint key has two properties. Uh, the first property has, is, which we call correctness, says that the, this user with this constraint key can evaluate the PRF on every input point which uh, is authorized by this predicate C. The second property is constraints of the randomness. And it says that on points that uh, uh, are not authorized by this predicate C, the value of the PRF looks random to the user, even with access, even when the user has access to the constraint key. In 2017, Bonnet, Levy, and Wu strengthened the notion of constraint PRF and uh, introduced private constraint PRF. A private constraint PRF is a constraint PRF where the constraint key uh, hides the constraint or the predicate C. So uh, here uh, the constraint key satisfies three properties. The first two properties are the, are the same as before, are correctness and constraints for the randomness. But we have a third property which uh, says that this constraint key hides the predicate C. Constraint and private constraint PRFs have found various applications. One notable application is software watermarking. In software watermarking, we have a program, a piece of software, and we want to put a mark on it. We need, uh, we need this mark to be unremovable, meaning that if someone has a marked version of our program, then he should not be able to remove this mark. We also want the watermarked version of our program to be functionally equivalent to the original unmarked version of our program. Bonnet, Levy, Wu, and Kim and Wu showed how to use private constraint PRFs to build PRFs that can be watermarked. Here we briefly give a, give a high level overview of their uh, construction. So in their construction, we have a PRF, which is a private constraint PRF, and we want to uh, put a mark on this PRF. The watermarked version of this PRF is a private constraint key corresponding to the point function predicate with, uh, with, with the random point x star. So this predicate authorizes every point except for this random point x star. To see why uh, this, uh, uh, this mark is unremovable, notice that since this is a private constraint PRF, the predicate is hidden and in particular, this random point x star is hidden. So uh, an adversary uh, cannot find out x star and cannot find out at which point this uh, uh, watermarked version differs from uh, the original version. To see why this, this is functionality preserving, notice that the uh, functionality of the watermarked version of the PRF is the same as the original PRF except for one Point, except for one random point. So this is for functionality preserving. And now, if uh, and now to check whether a watermarked version of whether a, a PRF is watermarked, one can uh, evaluate it, or uh, it, it the PR it can be evaluated on this uh, point x star random point x star, and then the, the value can be checked with the original version of the PRF, and if they are and they are not equal then uh, it means that we are dealing with a watermark version of the PRF. Constrained PRFs also have other applications. As shown by Bonnet, Levy, and Wu, they can be used to build 
uh, the deniable symmetric key encryption where the scenario is that uh, we want to generate fake keys which uh, open uh, ciphertext to random looking messages. Uh, another application is updatable cryptography where we want, uh, we have some crypto cryptographic uh, scheme and we want to update maybe the keys or the ciphertext quickly and uh, as shown by uh, Anans, Cohen and Jane uh, constrained PRFs can be used to build updatable garbage circuits. Constrained PRFs have been built based on various assumptions. The first three works that introduced the notion of constrained PRFs used one-way functions to build constrained PRFs for the limited class of prefix fixing predicates. Bonnet and Waters used multilinear maps to build constrained PRFs for polynomial size circuits. Uh, Atrapadong and others uh, use the DDH or DDH type assumptions in pairing free groups to support all uh, NC1 circuits or circuits of logarithmic depth. Most, le le most relevant to this uh, work, Brackers and Vaikuntanathan use the learning with errors assumptions to build constrained PRFs for polynomial size circuits. This construction, uh, the BV15 construction, inspired uh, many subsequent works which used their uh, techniques to build uh, uh, constrained PRFs or private constrained PRFs from lattice-based assumptions. Let's briefly review the learning with errors or LW assumption. The LW assumption is a computational assumption introduced by Regev in 2005. It is parameterized by dimension n, a modulus q, an error distribution chi, which is usually a Gaussian with, uh, with a square root of n. And with these parameters, the LW assumption is as follows. It says that for a uniformly random n-dimensional vector in Vq, the following two distributions are computationally indistinguishable. In the first distribution, we uh, first pick a uniformly random n by n matrix in Vq and output a, along with f times a plus e, where this e is an error vector where each a coordinate e, uh, comes from distribution chi, comes from this error distribution. LW says that this uh, distribution, uh, LW says that this uh, distribution is uh, computationally indistinguishable from the following distribution. Again, we pick a uniformly random n by n matrix A in VQ, but now the second uh, component is, is a uniformly random n-dimensional uh, vector in, uh, in VQ, okay? So this is the LWE assumption. It has been shown that if you can break LWE, then you can have a quantum algorithm to approximate certain short vector problems on integer lattices within Q square root of n approximation factors. So this reduction, in this reduction, it, it is clear that if Q becomes bigger, then the approximation factor becomes looser and uh, less desirable. Furthermore, if Q becomes larger, then we actually have better attacks that perform better. And this in particular means that we need to make uh, the dimension N bigger to prevent or to, to achieve certain uh, security level. So uh, security level. And this bigger dimension and also bigger uh, Q leads to, uh, uh, lead to uh, larger key size, larger public parameter size, and etc. So, in short, we prefer a modulus Q, which is a smaller. As I mentioned in a previous slide, after Brackers and Vaikuntanathan's work, there have been a few other uh, papers which build private constraint PRF for different uh, predicates. Bonnet and others build private constraint PRF for point functions. Canetti and Chen build it for NC1 circuits and Brackers and others than PyCart and myself build it for polynomial size circuits. If you, if you look at these um, uh, papers, then at least when they want to uh, support polynomially long inputs, if the PRFs want to support polynomially long inputs, then all of these constructions need a modulus which is sub-exponential in the dimension. Okay? In this work, we build constrained PRFs where the LWE modulus scales way slower than sub-exponential in the uh, dimension. In particular, 
we build a private constraint PRF for polynomial size circuit where the LWE modulus is exponential in the depth of the circuit. We also build a constraint PRF for log depth circuits for NC1 circuits where we, with a nearly uh, uh, polynomial LWE modulus. We also build um, private constraint PRFs for the class of inner product predicates based on any key homomorphic PRF. So instantiating our last, uh, this last result with the LW-based key homomorphic PRFs of Banerjee and Picard, we get uh, an LW-based private constraint PRF for inner product predicates with a nearly polynomial modulus. I have to mention that we get our results in a slightly relaxed model for constraint PRFs, but this relaxed model is sufficient for what the applications need. And in the, later in the talk, we will focus on this relaxed model. We also have an additional result. We build private constraint PRFs based on any one-way function for the predicate class of uh, uh, TCNF. And uh, this, is, uh, this was also independently noticed by De Davidson and uh, others. We can directly plug our, our private constraint PRFs into the watermarkable uh, PRF construction of Kim and Wu or the watermarkable PRF construction of Quach and others and get the first watermarkable PRF with uh, a quasi-polynomial uh, modulus. Our result, together with the work of Anant and other, gives us an updatable uh, cryptography primitives, updatable garbage circuit from LWE with a nearly polynomial modulus. Also, plugging our result into the uh, construction of, uh, into the work of Bonne and others, gives us deniable symmetric key encryption with, uh, from LWE with quasi polynomial modulus. One big caveat of our result is that uh, the concrete correctness level of our construction scales with the LWE modulus. So for instance, if you have a nearly polynomial LWE modulus, then an adversary running, on, in, running in nearly polynomial time can break the correctness of, uh, uh, of our scheme. So this means that we, only, we can only get uh, theoretical negligible uh, security or correctness. So this is room for a future work. Here we examine previous LW-based constraint PRF constructions and the reason they needed sub-exponential modulus. In previous constructions, the output of the PRF is some value in ZP, where P divides the modulus Q. To compute the original value of the PRF at some input point X, we first evaluate an intermediate function f prime and get a va value mod q, and then round it to get a value mod p. If we evaluate at point x using a constrained key, then we get intermediate value f prime plus noise, and then by, by rounding it, we get the value of the PRF. The problem happens when the intermediate value f prime is dangerously close to the rounding threshold. In this case, adding noise changes the rounded value and uh, correctness does not hold. Previous constructions got around this issue by making the ratio between q and p larger than input domain of the PRF. By doing this, and then using a union bound argument, they could uh, argue that the chance that there is an x such that f prime of x is in the borderline is negligible. But as I said, the caveat here is that doing this leads to q being sub-exponentially big. To avoid the sub-exponential modulus q, our first observation is that the current definition for constraint PRF has a restrictive notion of correctness. The existing correctness notion requires the value obtained using a constraint key be equal to the original value of the PRF at all authorized input points. We relax this correctness condition 
and define a new notion called feasible correctness. Feasible correctness relaxes the previous definition for uh, correctness in the following way. Feasible correctness now only requires the original value of the PRS and the value obtained using constraint key to match only at points that do not depend on the bit representation of the constraint key. For instance, if a point is chosen uniformly at random, then that does not depend on the bit representation of the constraint key. And this immediately tells us that feasible correctness is sufficient for watermarking. It is indeed uh, sufficient for most other applications. More formally, we model feasible correctness as a game where we have an adversary who has access to the original PRS as an oracle and can send this oracle uh, input point x and get the value of the PRF, original value of the PRF at uh, x. The adversary outputs, finally the adversary outputs x star and input point x star. And we say the adversary wins if there exists a predicate uh, c such that c authorizes x star and the original value of the PRF at x star and the value obtained using the constraint key at x star, the constraint key corresponding to c, do not match. So we say a constraint PRF is feasibly correct if any polynomial ad adversary has at most negligible has at most a negligible chance of winning this feasible correctness game. To see why feasible correctness is enough for most of the applications, notice that in, in almost all of the applications, when we are evaluating a PRF, we rarely evaluate, evaluate it on a point that depends on the bit representation or the description of the key of the PRF. And this is why feasible correctness is sufficient for almost all of the applications. We achieve feasible correctness by shifting with an independent PRF. In more detail, we will be using an auxiliary independent PRF, AuxPRF, with its key K. And we uh, concatenate this key K with the master secret key and the constraint key. Now, to evaluate the PRF at an input point X, we can compute f prime or f prime plus noise as before. But now prior to rounding, we add the value of the aux PRF at point x and then we round. The main observation here is that uh, if this input point x does not depend on uh, k, on the, uh, on the aux PRF key k, then the value of the aux PRF at point x looks random. And consequently, uh, the probability that f prime pl plus the value of aux prf is in lands in this borderline area is negligible. Finally, we describe our construction of private constraint prf for hyperplane predicates. In this setting, our input domain is L-dimensional vectors of uh, short integer. Our predicates are hyperplanes h alpha. Uh, where the coefficients of the hyperplane are alpha 0, alpha 1 through alpha sub L. And we will be using a key homomorphic PRF, KH, where key homomorphism means that if you evaluate the PRF at, uh, at point X with key K0 and add it to an evaluation at point X with key K1, then this is roughly equal to, approximately equal to evaluation at point X with key K0 plus K1. In our construction, the master secret key consists of L plus 1 secret keys for the underlying key homomorphic PRF. To evaluate the PRF at an input point X, we evaluate the underlying PRF at point X L plus 1 times. The first time we evaluate it using key K0. The second time we evaluate it using uh, key X1, K1. And the last time we evaluate it, ev evaluate it using key X sub L, K sub L. And then we sum up all these evaluations, and this would be the value of the PRF at point x. To generate a constraint key for hyperplane h sub alpha, where uh, which has coefficients alpha 0, alpha 1 through alpha sub l, we first uh, generate a random key uh, for the underlying uh, key homomorphic PRF. 
and then we output k sub 0 minus d alpha 0 through k sub l minus d alpha l as the constraint key. Evaluation using the constraint key is almost identical to evaluation using the master secret key. The only difference here is that we use the uh, constraint key and in particular the components of the constraint key. To see why this provides uh, correctness and uh, constraints of the randomness, we uh, use the uh, uh, key homomorphic property of uh, the underlying key homomorphic PRF. In particular, we notice that we can group together these KIs, and if we group together these KIs, then what we get is the value of the original value of the PRF at point X, and if we group together d alpha i's, then what we get is a multiple of the uh, uh, value of the um, uh, value of the uh, uh, key homomorphic PRF at point x, where this multiple is zero if x is in the hyperplane, and is non-zero if uh, x is not in the uh, uh, is not in the hyperplane. Plane. In the latter case. Since the, the value of the PRF at this point x, uh, the value of the key homomorphic PRF at this point x is random, then um, this, uh, this thing uh, hides the original value of the PRF. So this thing also looks random. Thanks for your attention. I would be happy to take questions in the live session.